Hi developers! Today, we'll be exploring dependency injection in ASP.NET Core MVC. Dependency injection sounds a little fancy, right? But don't worry, you'll be mastering it today. This is a crucial topic that every .NET developer needs to know. So, let's get started. What is dependency injection? First, let's understand it with a real-life example. Imagine you own a bakery shop. You have three crucial components, a baker, a delivery driver, and an oven. The baker makes the bread, the driver delivers it, and the oven bakes it. These components are the dependencies needed to run your bakery. Now, let's think about how you manage these dependencies. Without dependency injection, every time you want to bake bread, you will need to hire a new baker, a new driver, and buy a new oven. This would be incredibly inefficient and time-consuming because you're constantly setting up your dependencies from scratch. With dependency injection, you have a manager that ensures the baker, driver, and oven are ready, and you can use them whenever you need them. This manager handles the hiring and maintenance of these dependencies, so you don't have to worry about hiring or purchasing them each time. In programming, dependency injection works similarly. Instead of a bakery, imagine a software application with various components like a database service, a logging service, and an authentication service. With dependency injection, these services are provided to the parts of your application that need them without you having to manually create and manage them each time. Why do we need to use dependency injection in ASP.NET Core MVC projects? Because it will make your application more modular, testable, and easier to maintain, just like having a well-managed bakery shop. Now let's dive into a simple example. I've created an ASP.NET Core MVC web application project. Then I created a services folder. In this folder, we have configuration service, general service, and product service. So, these are the dependencies that the controllers need to use. Each service has an interface and a corresponding implementation. To use these services in our controllers, we need to register them in program.cs file. There are three ways to register services, add transient, add scoped, and add singleton. Each of them represents a choice of lifetime for the services. The choices depend on how you intend to use those services within the application. So, when should we use each of these? Let's break it down. Add transient registers the service with a transient lifetime. This means that every time the service is requested, a new instance is created. This is ideal for lightweight and stateless services. In our example, we use add transient for the general service. This service includes methods like get current date time, format date, get random number, is email valid, and is phone number valid. These methods are lightweight and stateless. We need to use them for transient lifetime only, so add transient is the perfect choice. Next, add scoped. Add scoped creates an instance of the service once per request. This means that a new instance is created for each HTTP request, and the same instance is used throughout that request. In our example, we register the product service with add scoped. The product service handles data operations like retrieving, saving, and deleting data from the database. Since these operations are specific to individual requests, AdScoped ensures that each request gets its own instance of the service. Lastly, AdSingleton. AdSingleton creates a single instance of the service and shares it across the entire application for its lifetime. This means that the same instance is used by all requests throughout the application's lifetime. In our example, we use Add Singleton for the configuration service. This service reads settings from appsettings.json using a method called getSetting. Since these settings are shared across the application, Add Singleton is the best choice to ensure that the same instance is used everywhere. Now that you've learned the differences, you can choose the right lifetime for your services and ensure that your application runs efficiently and correctly. After registering the services, it's time to use them in the controller. Let's say we want to use three services in the home controller. 
First, we declare three private read-only fields to hold the instances of the services. Then, in the constructor, we accept these services as parameters and assign them to our fields. This process is how dependencies are injected into a controller. Once these services are injected, we can use them in our action methods. For example, in this index action, we will use the iProduct service to fetch and display a product. Without dependency injection, we would write code to create a new instance of the product service in every action method, which is inefficient. Instead, we can use the injected service to fetch and display a product efficiently. A kind reminder, remember to inject only the necessary services that will be used in a controller. Avoid including services that are not used. And one more tip in the home controller. If we want to check the code details of the get new GUID string method, pressing F12 will take us to the interface definition. We cannot see the code detail in the interface definition and will then need to manually scroll to find the method in the class. To directly navigate to the method within the class instead of the interface, press Ctrl F12. This shortcut will take you straight to the method containing the code details. Now let's explore a common error that we will be getting when dealing with dependency injection. Let's say the general service wants to use product service and we're injecting product service into it. Then, we found out that the product service wanted to use general service, and we also injected general service into product service. Then, when we run the project, we will be getting this error, unable to connect to a web server. Let's open the console to view the detailed error. The error is some services are not able to be constructed. A circular dependency was detected. Why has this error occurred? It is due to a circular dependency between general service and product service. As you can see here, iGeneral service depends on iProduct service. iProduct service depends on iGeneral service. This creates a circular dependency, meaning that to create an instance of general service, the dependency injection container needs an instance of product service, but to create product service, it needs general service. This loop can't be resolved, leading to the error. So, to solve this problem, we need to refactor the services to avoid the circular dependency. We can evaluate whether both services really need references to each other. In most cases, one service can be refactored to use another approach. In our example, the general service is using product service in a method called calculate number of product. We can actually move this method to product service. Then, we can remove the dependency of product service from general service. Now, let's run the project again. The web application has been successfully launched. The error was solved. To recap, we've learned about creating a service, the three different lifetimes of registering the service, add transient, add scoped, and add singleton, injecting a service into a controller and the circular dependency error. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends and colleagues, and subscribe to the channel.